Hello everybody, Enders here. Uh, I apologize in advance for any audio problems here, but I don't actually have a recording studio, so I'm kind of making do here. I apologize for that. But uh, a little bit of a different video. You might have remembered some of you asked me, or might have taken interest to uh, me having a watch collection, and some of you actually asked me, oh, would you ever show the watch collection on camera? Oh, would you ever go through our watches? And I actually said I would eventually. And um, yes, this is a Zowie GSR all my watches are on right now because I didn't have any uh, large soft surface to put my watches on. So, you know, thank you Zowie for making a mouse pad. That's fantastic. So um, without further ado, I guess I'd go through all my watches now. I have them laid out in order of uh, what I've actually bought them in. So the first watch I ever bought was a Seiko SSA 359. Um, I don't know, it has a 9000 series Miyoto movement in it. Try to clean all my watches up before the video. Um, I bought this watch for a number of re reasons. Um, for the price point, Seiko really doesn't disappoint. These are some of the best dials you can get with a price point. This camera kind of doesn't do it justice and that'll probably apply to all of these watches, but the dial in the sunlight is one of my favorite dials I have in my collection. Um, I really liked the open heart design. That's what they call this at the nine o'clock position on the watch. You can actually see the balance and the escapement of the watch actually ticking away. You can see it on the backside here as well. You can see that through the movement there. Oh, let me try to get that. And uh, this is when I was really early getting into watches. It really just, I don't know. I really like the mechanical intricacies of watches and I like being able to actually see it without having to turn the watch over. So I wear this quite often. I haven't set it in a little bit because I actually, you know, I've been wearing some of the new watches, but um, this is the first watch I have ever actually bought myself. Next watch is a gift from my parents. I'm actually waiting for a new strap for it, but uh, this is a gift from my parents, I believe maybe two or three years ago now. This is a Junkers or Junkers for the Germans out there, 6060-5, uh, 100 years Bauhaus. Um, I just really like German designed watches. They call this design Bauhaus inspired design from the Bauhaus School of Design in Germany way back when. I, can, I can't begin to tell you the, the years of that, but this is just a very beautiful watch. I love the dark blue dial and the way it plays with the light, and this also has a 9000 series Miyota movement in it, very reliable, really don't have to get it serviced much at all. I love the power reserve in the front of it, and it keeps actually way better time than advertised. I had, I actually didn't really have to set the time on this watch for really about three or four days when I thought I would have to set it pretty much every single day. At six o'clock, you have your 24 hour sub dial, so it keeps 24 hour time. Uh, at the time of recording this, it's literally, uh, you know, midnight, so this watch is not correctly set, but yeah. That's the second watch, a uh, gift from my parents. Wear this quite a lot. Although the strap that this came with was why I bought a new strap. Um, let's just say it wasn't great, <laughs> but we're replacing that. Um, now, probably the most special watch in my collection was actually a watch that I bought after I got 7,000 subs on YouTube. So yes, you guys maybe spend money on a watch. So I blame you. Um, <laughs> but this is a Christopher Ward C65 GMT World Timer. As you can see, it is water resistant to 150 meters. I don't do much swimming, but you know, if I ever were to, I, this is the watch I would swim with. Although I don't actually think I would swim in my watches. Um, yeah, I think I would leave it in the house. But this watch serves a lot of purposes. If I ever go traveling, this is the watch that I will bring. It is a GMT world timer. As you can see, the yellow hand on the watch itself is the GMT hand, which points to a ring for the 24 hour time. I currently have this set to keep time in London at the moment. So whenever I upload videos or anything and I'm wearing this watch, I know what time it is in a second part of the world. And actually using the bezel here, I'm not sure if you guys can see that very well, but the bezel has a bunch of names printed from all the major cities in the world, or a lot of the major cities in the world, and you can actually turn the bezel to whatever city you want and see what time it is around the world in all the other cities. So 
I really like that this watch. Um, I had it engraved in the back. I'll try to show you here. Might be a little hard to see with the setup here. Yeah, you can see it just then. 7,000 YouTube subs and the date that I got it. So thank you guys so much for the subs, by the way. You go, you guys are awesome. You guys really support me very well. And, uh, you know, I figured I'd commemorate you guys with a watch because that is a pretty special moment, in my opinion. Now, the next watch is a manually wand watch. This is not an automatic watch. All, all the watches I've shown you so far are automatic. This is my first manually wound watch. This is a my first dress watch, really. This is a Nomos Glashuta Metro 38 date. And there's another version with a power reserve right about there on the dial. I actually prefer the version without the power reserve. I think the power reserve indicator, which I'll put a picture up when I'm editing just to show you the, the separate version of this watch. I don't like the power reserve indicator, so I decided to actually buy the one without it. Um, I love the design of this watch. It is so simple. As you can see, the watch is extremely thin, and the movement is absolutely beautiful. Nomos actually making in-house movements all the way down to the escapement, and this watch is one of my absolute favorites. The thickness on this watch, I believe, is I, it's just above seven millimeters or it might even be below seven millimeters. So it is it is a very thin watch keeps great time and very easy to read. I wear this very often Next watch is a Tissot Bridgeport Chronograph. Uh, this is my first ever mechanical chronograph. I Bought this because it, it's just I Mean it's just it's just a beautiful watch. I love the band with it. It feels like silk you know, it doesn't even feel like metal. Very, very comfortable watch. Uh, I'll start the chronograph for you guys right now. So what a chronograph does, for those that don't know, it actually allows you to time things. They might say, oh, well, you can time things with a watch. Well, this has a built-in function for that. So watch this. So hit that. Center second start. So the chronograph uses the second hand in the center to keep time. And the actual running seconds is your 9 o'clock sub-dial here. So, if you want to time something, an event, boom, okay, that took, what, 16, 17 seconds, and then you reset it like that, boom. This watch is beautifully decorated on the back as well. This is a Valjoux um, 7553, very well decorated on the back from Tissot. I got an insane deal on this watch, uh, warranty, so I figured I would go ahead and get it. I wear this quite often. I wear all my watches. Um, I, I figure if I'm going to have a collection, you might as well wear them. Next up, probably my most obscure watch. Um, very few people will know what this is if you're not a watch person. Um, this is a Seiko Ripley, they're called. This watch was actually in the Alien movie, worn by Sigourney Weaver. Um, I'll put an edit up on the screen right now for you guys to see, but this watch has a bit of a cult following. Uh, it is a quartz watch, my first ever quartz watch, quartz chronograph, so same function here, start, center seconds, you know, stop, and then reset, this is really cool to watch it reset. So, really interesting thing about this watch is the bracelet, as you can see it's an integrated bracelet system. The, listen. I don't even know how many people are going to watch this video, but here's the thing. If you're thinking about, if you're thinking about buying a Seiko Ripley or a Seiko uh, Gagario design is what they're called, the bracelet on this thing, you are going to have one hell of a time changing the size of this bracelet. I'll link a video in the description that actually tells you how to change the size of the bracelet, the sizing of the bracelet here. Um, let's just say you might actually hurt yourself doing it. I did, for sure. I actually did my thumb in pretty well sizing the bracelet on this watch, so yeah. But it's awesome, and I wear it uh, quite often. And the last watch I actually got in my collection is a limited edition from Worn and Wound and Christopher Ward. This is a C65 Sandstorm chronometer. It is a chronometer. I said a. Ugh, it's a chronometer certified um, watch, which means it keeps very very good time and cold heat um it's it, this the movement inside of this watch is a Salita sw 
200 COSC. I love the black on white dial. It's just, I don't know. I could stare at this watch for hours. I don't know about you guys. It's, I love the way they did the inner date ring. If you can see here, I'll get real, clo real close. Little red marker shows you what day it is. And a lot of watches actually can't get the spacing between the different date numbers correctly. A lot of the times you'll see watches with date complications like this have the one and the 31 directly next to each other. This watch has them all evenly spaced all throughout the dial. And I think that just does it a great service as the way it looks. The case is actually DLC coated stainless steel. So it is very, very scratch resistant, very thin, nice little red accent there on the crown. If I, my fucking camera will focus. There it is. Nice. Uh, like I said, this is limited edition. Only 100 of these watches have ever been made and will ever be made. So i um, very lucky to get my hands on this, actually. I love this watch. It is great. So that is my watch collection. I don't think I'll be adding anything new anytime soon, but who knows? Maybe for 2042, I might have to fucking ball out a little bit. You know? Um, so if you like the video, hit the like button. And uh, hey, if you have a collection yourself and you want to send me some pictures, link the pictures in the comments or, you know, hit me up on stream when I'm actually streaming if you want to talk about watches i'll be very happy to do so so if you like the video hit the like button if you want to subscribe for more watch content i guess you can do that but i don't really think i'll be doing another one of these videos anytime soon so i'll see you guys later